Three things to know, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade's friendship changed the NBA. Monday night at Staples Center was the final time LeBron James and Dwayne Wade will share the court together. It was a bittersweet moment appreciated by the Lakers fans, people new to LeBron fandom, who gave Wade a standing ovation when he entered the game. Then those fans got to watch the old friends duel on the court like old times. The pair came into this game 15-15 in head-to-head -head meetings, but LeBron now finishes with those bragging rights, then, after Wade missed a desperation shot to tie the game late, the two men embraced and exchanged jerseys. It was a fitting and emotional end to two Hall of Fame careers, ones that forever altered the league. LeBron and Wade, along with Chris Bosh, fundamentally changed the NBA, they were the players that decided we're getting together and forming a super team. Those players took charge of their destiny. They were not leaving it up to the white guys in suits to decide what they should do, although Pat Riley deserves credit for creating the space to give all three a landing spot. Then they went out and won rings, plural. Other superstars took note, and it's not just to the Warriors, it's the shape of the NBA that is changing because these players own their power. Wade and LeBron formed a legendary Heat team that went to four straight finals, winning two, and providing us with some of the greatest moments and memories in finals history. In a few years, they will be sitting on the back deck of Wade's house in Miami, sharing a bottle of wine that you and I can't afford, and reminiscing about those days and what they did. They're in that moment. And players who come after them should thank them for showing just how much leverage the players really have. A couple of weeks ago, one of the hot discussion topics around the NBA was what is wrong with the Boston Celtics? They were 10-10 and struggling to score enough buckets to win. Nobody is asking anymore. The Celtics have won six in a row outscoring teams by a ridiculous 25.6 points per 100 possessions in that stretch. Monday night, shorthanded without, and, they knocked off Anthony Davis and the Pelicans, 113-100. to It was the kind of team when we have come to expect from the Celtics, with elite defense and someone stepping up on offense. This time it was with 31 points. That said, Anthony Davis had Celtics fans dreaming of what could be, scoring 41 and looking like the MVP candidate he is and the Davis to Boston rumors will not die, even though Davis is not and will not be available for trade during this season, and Boston can't trade for him during the season without sacrificing Irving due to CBA rules anyway. While Davis was the best player on the court, the play everyone is talking out of this is Boston rookie Robert Williams blocking Davis. The Celtics are racking up these wins through a soft part of their schedule, and that continues for a while, Wizards, Haas, the suddenly struggling Pistons, and the Suns make up their next four. Monday night, Kevin Durant, and all took the court together for the first time since November 5th, the Warriors are back. Predictably, that was bad news for the visiting Timberwolves, who fell 116-108. to Curry was doing Curry things again and had 38 points. The Warriors have won four in a row. More telling, however, is how we have talked about Green's and Curry's injuries, tried to psychoanalyze the relationship between Green and Durant, and talked about their problems and yet here they are. 19-9 and just percentage points out of first in the West, and just starting to come together. Their problems have been overblown, and the league is now about to watch them get their legs under them again and go on a run. Never doubt this is the best team in the NBA and if your team is dreaming of the Larry O'Brien trophy you're going to have to pry it out of the Warriors' hands. Phoenix is is filling up the box score as a rookie, but his defense has a long, long way to go. That said, he had what many thought was the impossible block shot on Monday night shutting down 7 apostrophe 3 Boban Marjanovic. Now we've seen everything. Zion Williamson is a force of nature, an athletic freak that has become must-watch television and silenced the doubters about his game. Before the season, scouts questioned his shot and fit, but his play for Duke so far has moved him past teammate RJ Barrett on everybody's draft board into the consensus number one pick. The shine has really come off Barrett early this season for a guy averaging 24 points a game. Cam Reddish may be the second Blue Devil taken in next June's draft. Joins me to talk Duke's trio of superstars, plus other names to watch in this coming draft, such as Gonzaga's Rui Jamora Oregon 7 apostrophe 2 Bol Bol, maybe the most divisive player in the draft, Kevin Porter out of USC and many others. As always, you can check out the podcast below, subscribe via, check us out on, or check out. We want your questions for future podcasts, and your comments, so please. Greg Popovich is one of the greatest coaches in NBA history. His resume can stack up next to anyone's, the sustained excellence of 20 seasons of 50-plus wins which has given him a .686 win percentage, the five NBA titles, 
and maybe most impressive of all is small market San Antonio into an NBA franchise that was feared on the court and modeled off it. And, of course, there are all the wins, 1,211 of them to be exact after the Spurs knocked off the struggling Suns Tuesday night. That win moved Popovich past Pat Riley into fourth on the all-time coaching wins list. Popovich needs just 10 more wins to tie Utah legend Jerry Sloan for third on the list, something that will happen well before the All-Star break. Will he coach long enough to catch Don Nelson or Lenny Wilkins at the top of the coaching wins leaderboard, it would take more than 100 additional wins? Only Popovich knows that, although the speculation around the NBA is probably not, many expect him to retire after the 2019-20 season, although nobody knows for sure. Whatever happens, Popovich's place on the all-time wins list just adds to a Hall of Fame legacy. When the discussion turns to speculation about where Kawhi Leonard could be playing next season, the Los Angeles Clippers are high on the list. He grew up in Southern California and wants to return there, sources say he doesn't want to play with LeBron on the Lakers, and the Clippers have been surprisingly impressive this season but are a team without a true superstar that is looking to add one, or two, the Leonard end. Not that the notoriously media-shy Leonard cares about the speculation. I don't buy into reading media, don't have no social media, so just focus on what's in front of me, Leonard said before his Raptors took on the Clippers Tuesday night without him, due to a tweaked hip. At that time it's either my family or playing basketball. If the Clippers, or any team, is going to impress and entice Leonard, it's not going to be with a well-crafted marketing plan to grow his brand, the people advising Leonard on the other hand. Leonard presents the image of being focused only on what happens on the court. That's where the Clippers fell short Tuesday. Actually, fell short is putting it kindly. The Clippers got thumped by 24 on their home court, their worst loss of the season. Playing without its superstar, Toronto looked like a team much closer to the NBA's elite in terms of talent and execution than Los Angeles. The Raptors won 123-99 in a game that was not in doubt from early in the third quarter on. I think we just played bad, Clippers guard said, summing it up well. We just had a rough night. We didn't play well defensively. That was the starkest contrast, while the Clippers looked like a day's team on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and without, who will miss a couple of weeks with a tweaked hamstring, the Raptors' defenders were on a string, they switched, they rotated, they even threw in a zone for a few plays and the Clippers could not adapt fast enough. Toronto turned the stops into shots in transition and the Clippers were not getting back or handling their scrambling defense well. Feasted on the Clippers with 25 points. However. The best news for the Raptors was the return of the Real, who had 21 points on 8 of 13 shooting to break out of his slump, he had shot 8 of 42 over his previous 5 games. Whatever Leonard decides to do this summer, stay in Toronto, come to Los Angeles, or choose from the 28 other teams that will be knocking on his door, the decision will not be based on the outcome of one December game. However, if the Clippers were trying to show off an impressive young core Leonard could join and elevate, this was not the effort that they needed. Toronto on the other hand, looked exactly like a team with an impressive young core. One Leonard is already elevating to the top of the East. About once every week or so I watch a Rockets game and think, they can get it together and turn this around. Not turn around to the level they expected entering the season, they are not going to be a threat to the Warriors with this current roster, but there are nights they look like a playoff team and better than their sub. 500 record. Tuesday was one of those nights, mostly thanks to hot play off the bench. Houston's second unit outscored Portland's 37-13, and they were the group that blew the game open at the end of the third and into the fourth. Daniel House and combined for 25 points, shooing 4 of 7 from 3 and 64.3% overall, and they had 9 rebounds. Houston was plus 22 when they were on the court together. Had 29 points, which continued to struggle, with 11 points on 12 shots. While the Rockets looked better, Portland struggled. There was too much isolation not enough ball movement, and and took 53% of the team's shots. The trailblazers were predictable, and that made the struggling Rockets defense look good. I've seen too many good games followed by bad ones from Houston to suggest the Rockets have turned the corner, so let's just say the good Rockets showed up for one night. We'll see who shows up Thursday night against the Lakers. When it is all said and done, Greg Popovich will go down as one of the best coaches in NBA history. The sustained excellence, the five rings, turning small market San Antonio into an NBA franchise to be feared on the court and modeled off it, all will be part of his legacy. So will all the wins he's racked up, 1,211 of them after the Spurs win over the struggling Suns Tuesday night. That moved Popovich past Pat Riley into fourth on the all-time coaching wins list. 
Popovich is just 10 wins shy of tying Jerry Sloan for third, something that will happen in the coming months. I don't know if he's going to coach long enough to catch Don Nelson or Lenny Wilkins at the top of that leaderboard, it would take more than 100 additional wins, but Popovich's win total just adds to his legacy and place in history. The current social media marketing landscape is sort of a gross place to be. People will do anything for clicks, views, and the idea of all PR being good PR is taken to the extreme by many parties. We live in a world where Kanye West, who made a couple of good albums a decade ago, in advance of any new marketing campaign as a way to keep his name in the news, and in search engines, prior to the release of a shoe or a new song. It's not very subtle. Golden State Warriors guard appears to have done much the same this week. Curry proposed that he, prompting widespread discussion of the kind of negative impact those comments can have. Both the SPN's PTI and issued commentary on it that was out of the ordinary, and fans denounced Curry for setting a bad example and being. And now, just a couple of days later, Curry has a new shoe for you to buy from Under Armour. Imagine that. Tuesday night Curry was at an event showing off the new shoes, and he even did a Q&A on Twitter. Perfect timing, don't you think? Steph, let me tell you buddy. This is not the way to sell a shoe. Well, it is way to sell a shoe in 2018, but as the two-time NBA MVP and a three-time NBA champion, it's definitely not the right look for a guy of your stature. This is gross, and inappropriate, and honestly damages the legacy of how people will write about you and view you in the future. Say it was a bad joke and move on. It's not worth it to look like you'd sell your soul just to huck some rip-off Kobe 10 All-Stars anyway. The UA Curry 6 drops soon but I'm not telling you where.